Hi there, this is another in the series of topic videos on inflation. Uh, this time we're going to be focusing on the consequences of inflation, in particular the economic and social costs of a high rate of inflation. And here are some countries where inflation is undoubtedly an issue. All of these nations have inflation of more than 10%. In 2015, of course, the outlier is the troubled, crisis-ridden economy of Venezuela with inflation of nearly 160%. In most other years, Ukraine would be well out ahead with inflation of 50%. That looks, that looks small in comparison. All of these countries have a rate of annual price inflation of more than 10%. So clearly, these countries must face up to some of the economic costs, the consequences of high inflation. So why do economists regard inflation as being a problem? Why do many central banks, for example, target price stability, uh, aka an inflation target of, let's say, 2%? Well, the reason is because the general consensus is that high inflation is problematic for a country. Let's go through some points. Firstly, it's often the case that inflation is, uh, really affects lower income families quite badly, particularly if prices are rising for their spending patterns more than, more than the average. And also, many of low income families may not have bank accounts which pay interest, they may hold their savings in the form of cash. And inflation directly reduces the real, real return on cash. It's clearly negative. So there's a risk that high inflation can be quite regressive for vulnerable communities and vulnerable households. Uh, people in work, if their wages are rising less quickly than prices, then their real incomes will go down. That's certainly been true in the UK in recent times. And if you're a saver and the interest you're getting on your site or your term deposit in a bank is again less than inflation, then the real return on your savings will be negative. So savers may stand to suffer from price rises. Typically, uh, point four reminds us that in a world of high inflation, typically interest rates go up as well. Central banks may respond by raising their own policy rates and lenders too. So businesses and consumers may end up paying more for their mortgages, more for their overdrafts and things. That's the danger of high inflation, that the cost of debt repayment climbs as well. Another risk of high inflation is that the wage, spi wage price spiral, let's get it right, might kick in. This means that people see inflation going up and they may decide to bid for higher wages in a, in a bid to protect their real incomes. We'll come on to that in a little bit more detail in a second. I think the next two points, point six and point seven, really are worth focusing on in your revision notes. One of the big dangers and risks of high inflation, particularly when it gets above five, eight, ten percent, is that if your inflation rate in your country is much higher than that of a competitor country, you are going to lose price competitiveness pretty quickly. Of course, this depends on the difference between inflation rates across countries. But let's say, for example, your country has an inflation rate of 10% and a competitor country, or another with which you share a border, has an inflation rate of, let's say, 3%. Then in one year, there's going to be a 7% loss of competitiveness, assuming the exchange rate stays the same. So high relative inflation, repeat that, high relative inflation, can lead to a substantial loss of competitiveness. And that's really quite important if you take a, an international view. And I think point seven is really quite important. High inflation can be quite damaging to lots of people. When prices are rising fast, consumers don't really know whether to spend or save. Cons businesses thinking about, are not quite sure what their costs are going to be and how much they can charge. So they're not sure at all what the return on their investment might be. Some businesses might decide to in add a risk premium to their investment before they before they go ahead, inflation creates uncertainty, and uncertainty is not good news for the macroeconomy. It can lead to mis misallocation of resources, for example. But fundamentally, businesses are less likely to invest and employ people if they're not sure what their costs are going to be. I think that's a key point. Who are the possible winners and losers from high inflation? Well, some of the winners can be people in the labour market who have particularly especially strong wage bargaining power. Some people of course set their own wages, others belong to unions that have relatively strong bargaining power because they have credible threat power in the industry. So workers, some workers may, may be able to protect themselves with inflation. Uh, debtors may benefit if the real interest rate on a loan is less. And some producers may gain if the prices they're charging are rising faster than their costs their profitability will increase. 
On the other hand, there will be losers from inflation. Uh, people who've retired and who have to depend on a, essentially a fixed income. The state pension, by the way, increases by inflation or 2.5% or average earnings, whichever is the higher. So the state pension in the UK is more or less protected from inflation. But many people in different countries don't have that kind of pension protection. Their pension is pretty fixed. And in the world of inflation, that's, that's bad news. Lenders may lose if the rate of interest they're charging is less than inflation. And savers may lose if the real return on their deposited money is negative. Come back to that in a second. Typically, workers in very low-paid jobs, they rarely have a significant union protection. They're oftentimes uh, employed by powerful employers with monopsony power. Effectively, they, they take the wage they're given. And in a world of high inflation, there's no guarantee that their wage will rise in line with prices. So then their real income may go down. I think this chart is quite important actually. It just shows the rate of interest on savings and loans in the UK right at the end of 2015. The point for showing this is really look at look at the rate of interest on site deposits and time deposits. So site deposits, money in a current account, you take it out straight away from your ATM machine. Rate of interest, pathetic, isn't it? It's less than about less than one percent, maybe half a percent. Even with a time deposit, you leave your money on deposit with the bank for six months, two years, you're only going to get just over one percent on your money. So if you're a saver in this country, the real return on saving is nearly always negative. In contrast, credit card rates, 10% on average, many people pay more. So the real cost of borrowing there is about 8%. Now, crucially, just finally, the costs, the consequences of inflation depend upon. This is one of your go-to evaluation phrases. It's a classic phrase to use, but it does invite you know, pretty strong evaluation. But let's go through a few examples here. So the effects of high inflation, we're, we're assuming that the effects are broadly speaking negative for the macro economy, but they depend upon whether the high inflation is a temporary phenomenon, perhaps caused by a big spike in oil, oil and gas prices, which might tail away, or whether the inflation looks like being a persistent problem. You know, if inflation becomes embedded at 5% or 8%, that can cause more problems. Uh, the effects depend upon the rate of inflation in our trading partners. That's the point I made a few minutes ago. It depends on the relative rate of inflation. That affects the scale of any lost competitiveness. And in the exam, just put a little numerical example in, like 7% compared to 3%, 10% compared to 1%. Let's just make the point with a little numerical example. Uh, the effects of inflation depend on the extent to which the central bank, in our case the Bank of England in the UK, extent to which they're prepared to tolerate some inflationary pressure. Many central banks have inflation targets, but they don't necessarily always stick to them. They don't necessarily axiomatically, automatically have to respond to high inflation with raising interest rates. So you have to watch that one carefully. The cost of inflation depends on whether workers have genuine bargaining power. Can they protect their real incomes? And the effects of inflation depend upon whether interest rates, nominal interest rates on savings and loans actually keep pace with inflation. And crucially, the effects of inflation depends on whether the uncertainty we talked about, whether that kind of loss of business and consumer confidence actually feeds through into decisions. Decisions, for example, to hold back on investment or decisions to, to cut back on employment. You know, so the uncertainty affects things. Hey, look, I know I've missed out some of these costs of inflation, things like menu costs, the cost of changing menus and changing databases. Those are basically irrelevant, by the way. Uh, what really matters is the cost of inflation to the macro economy, jobs, real incomes, inequality and competitiveness. That, everybody, is what really matters. Final little point. Inflation is quite hard to forecast. I, mean, I find forecasting quite hard, especially about the future. But inflation is quite hard to forecast. Lots of reasons. Look, we have lots of external shocks, things like the price of oil and gas and copper and rubber and copper uh, coffee in the world economy is quite volatile from month to month, year to year. Uh, governments can change their VAT and their tax systems. Uh, the currency can move up and down. Commodity prices, food prices can change. And the, the economic cycle can twist as well. So... Inflation is pretty hard to forecast, hence the so-called inflation rivers of blood chart shown here on the right from the Bank of England. 
the further we look to the future, the harder it is to forecast the rate of inflation going forward. But perhaps more about that when we look at uh, other topic videos on monetary policy. Hopefully this has been useful for you. We've focused on some of the consequences of inflation. Check out our inflation videos on YouTube and I uh, hope to see you again sometime soon.